Sarah Spain, Pablo Torre, Kevin Blackstone, great to have you here. Seahawks and Patriots always coming down to the one yard line. Every time I come here, you two, every time. The call <laughs> for Newton, everybody had to be expecting that. It was the eighth time they did it last night. But for the first time all night, Seahawks knocking him back. Sarah Spain, I don't need to say any more. Around the horn to you. Have you come to blast McDaniels and Belichick for the play <laughs> call there? Or is that just the Seahawks defense? Bobby Wagner, LJ Collier, Lano Hill getting it done. Well, first, I'm glad for our friend Mina Kimes that another game of this type wasn't lost for the Seahawks on a one-yard line play. So you're <laughs> welcome, Mina, for that one. Um, I'm probably never going to make the big bucks in this industry because I tend not to presume that I know more than Hall of Fame coaches. So, no, I'm not going to blame Belichick and McDaniels for this call. In the 19 times that Cam Newton has rushed from the opponent's one-yard line, this is the only time he's ever lost yards. It doesn't always work, but it usually does. And we wanted to make some sort of play like he did before where you draw the defense in and they bite on the cam run and then he dinks it over the top to someone wide right. We yeah. saw it earlier. Maybe they thought – they saw it earlier. They're going to be looking for it. And if they had run anything gimmicky or anything different, we would have said, you have a giant quarterback. What are you doing? Just rush him up the gut. Okay. He's going to make it. He's going to fall okay. in. But he just it didn't work out this time. So we can't get Sarah to critique the call here. Pablo Torre, can you? <laughs> I cannot critique a coach okay. for doing the opposite, Tony of what the coach he beat in the 2014 Super Bowl did, right? That's what Pete Carroll did. It's exactly what he did. He was like, everyone expects Marshawn Lynch. Everyone expects the Spanish Inquisition. We're going to go the other way. No, <laughs> give them the Spanish Inquisition. Give them Cam Newton. And so Cam Newton, by the way, in this game, like – he made everybody look so stupid, Tony. It wasn't just on the ground. It was everywhere. Yeah. The guy yeah, clearly is. Right. So, yeah. so the point is, give Belichick credit for sticking with that dude that no one okay. else wanted to go with in the offseason. You know, it's funny. I expected the Spanish Inquisition from Sarah Spain. I didn't expect it from Pablo. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. Kevin Black is on an RPO, a run pass option. The play they ran uh, half a game earlier, which was perfection with the pass for the touchdown. Or are you all right with how the Patriots played this? I'm all right with the play call in terms of not taking the ball out of Cam Newton's hands, right? Um, but the only, my only question is, you've asked so much of this guy this entire game, you would figure that on one play, the game-defining play, that maybe the other side would kind of figure it out. And so why would you bunch everybody up? Why not spread them out along the, the goal line there? Why not give him some more options? Even Cam Newton said, after he thought about it, of course, this is yeah. 2020, um, but he said he may have bounced it outside. I just thought that it was a little bit conservative given his yeah. talent. The guy okay. already accounted for, I mean, he accounted for 95.7% yeah. <laughs> of their yards on the night. Yeah. What more yeah. could he do? I got do? you. Bobby Wagner blew up the middle of the play, and then Lano Hill, who's the backup backup safety, I mean, he made it an incredible play. Sometimes they make an incredible play. It was the first time all game they did. All right, so let's talk about Cam Newton here, Pablo Torre, and what you saw from him last night and the last two weeks, of course. But last night, even throwing the ball, the zip on his ball, and all the other quarterbacks that were signed this offseason before him that are making more money than him. Nathan Peterman is a name that comes to mind right now. Go ahead, Pablo. The floor is yours. Yeah, the Peterman. The Peterman is making more than Cam Newton. And, Tony, when you look at the anatomy of Cam Newton in this game, the legs were phenomenal, but it's the arm. Keep in mind, in Carolina, the last time we saw Cam Newton try to throw deep balls, he was getting subbed out like a pitcher with a dead arm for a guy named Taylor Heineke. That's that's how bad Cam Newton's arm was. But in this game, he showed off the fact that he seems to be fully healthy. So if that's what the Patriots have, yes, once again, the rest of the league has been made stupid by Bill Belichick. I want to read the list that Bill Barnwell put together today. Peterman, Matt Barkley, Matt Schaub, still in the league. Chad Henney, A.J. McCarron, Case Keenum, Colt McCoy, Brett Hundley. Blaine Gabbert, these guys are making more money than Cam Newton this year. They were signed before him or, in some cases, right around the same time. Kevin Blackstone, how do you, how do you feel about that today? Well, that kind of angers me with the NFL, um, yeah. that they would sign all these guys and pass on a guy who's been in the Super Bowl, has got MVPs, you know how dangerous he is, you know how good he looked last night, 444 of their 464 yards he contributed to. And yet he has to play for a minimum one-year contract? That doesn't make sense to me. And I know he had to get healthy, 
But you know what? Marcus Mariota, he got, he got more money, uh, more guaranteed money, and yes. he is completely banged up back on the injured list yet again. So I do we, not we, buy this estimation that, that the other teams in need of a quarterback used to pass over a guy you know, like Cam Newton. The signing happened, and everybody's like, well, Belichick's a genius again. Is it Belichick being a genius, or is that everybody else <laughs> is <laughs> not <laughs> operating at the best level? Yes. Uh, real quick, Sarah Spain, I, I want to ask you who proved more to you last night. Was it Cam Newton, or is it Russell Wilson? Because his name hasn't even mentioned yet, and that was an enormous game again for Wilson. Yeah, we know that Russell Wilson's great. We know the Seahawks are going to contend, but letting Russ cook just means they could be even better. Yeah. I'm much more surprised by the Patriots because of the giant if. If Cam is healthy, and I understand where Blackstone's coming from, and I understand the NFL doesn't deserve any benefit of the doubt, but I will say the confluence of events that meant that teams couldn't look at them with their own physician, that meant that they weren't sure early on whether he would take a minimum contract okay. like that, and they were signing backups that they knew were looking for a certain role. There's a lot that went into it. Again, the Patriots end up looking like the geniuses, and again, Again, I probably shouldn't give the NFL the benefit of the doubt, but there well, were it sounds like you just did. Just a bunch it sounds of people like passing. you just did, Sarah Spade. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to move on now. I mean, I need to talk about how the Cowboys came back and how the Falcons blew this game. It came down to a lot of things, but number one, the onside kick. And I'm going to say this right now. I think we haven't figured out how to solve the onside kick problem and make the games at the end fun and uncertain again. What happened <laughs> last night? The Falcons didn't touch the ball for 10 yards. That should be the new rule. No one can touch the ball for 10 yards. Nobody can break the plane on the receiving team of 10 yards because this, <laughs> I mean, that, that should be the new rule. It's not the rule, though. Roll tape on this. The Falcons <laughs> and team, they could touch this ball. They did not touch this ball. They chose or were instructed or who knows not to touch this ball. And it's just incredible. This is called the watermelon kick because it's no tee. It broke perfectly. And of the all-time chokes in a game ever, that's now on the list. People are talking about this loss from up 29-10 and the Super Bowl loss when they were up 28-3 and saying Dan Quid should be fired. Sarah Spain, should he be fired? Well, let's see. They had a 99.9% .9 chance of winning the game with 252 to play, and they somehow blew it. Yeah. They were the first team in the history of the NFL since they started recording turnover statistics to have 39 <laughs> points and no turnovers <laughs> and lose the game. Oh. 440 teams before them managed oh. to pull it off oh. and the first to lose. So as we're talking about this onside kick, and I'm thinking to myself, man, did they not know the rule that they could touch it? Yeah. Or maybe they knew the rule that they could touch it, but they thought it was too wobbly and that they'd have to risk better to see if it would go the 10 yards instead of touching it and might squirt out. And then I thought, who really cares? Why are they in a position to lose the game in an onside kick that they had such a big lead on? Okay. Brutal. So to answer the question, <laughs> 440 and now. Oh, yeah. The and, question. And, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think that they also showed a lot of promise early in the game and that if they can find a way to take advantage of that without ruining it, then they should leave Quinn in longer. All right, so you don't think this is a fireable effect? You could be blowing up this season. Pablo Torre, how about you? You got to fire Dan Quinn. I mean, how many other ways can you underscore coaching as a problem? Theoretically, the guy who's telling these players what the rules of football are would be a coach somewhere. And Dan Quinn, Tony, last year, a year ago, he cleaned house when it came to his assistants. He changed over everybody. All that is left is Dan Quinn. And that dude, like... The Atlanta F-words, it could not have been a more fitting metaphor for their existence than just helplessly watching a football spin wildly out of control until you lose. At some yeah. point, the coach needs to answer for all of that. KB, where are you on this? Well, I mean, something happened here, right? Either the players did not know the rule, which is a coaching happened. problem. Yes. Either, mm -hmm. either the players were reminded of the rule, um, or either the players suffer from some mental acuity that the rest of us are glad that we don't. Um, so this comes back to a coaching problem, yeah. that particular moment. Now, whether or not he should be fired for this one collapse, um, I don't know. We're two games into the season. Let's see how a few more games play out. But if you yeah. start to have this happen over and over and over again during this season, okay. then I would say his job. We're two games into a season, full. but we're 441 games into that stat. That's not a fake game. This is the first time. <laughs> um, Dallas had two fake punts that failed. They missed on a two-point conversion. Um, they had three turnovers, but Prescott was great in the game. They won this game. 
Pablo, can you learn anything about Dallas in a game like this, or is it still just about the Atlanta F-words, as you call them? Yeah, it's, it's really hard to feel good about a win like this, as much as Jerry Jones was celebrating with his N95 and his luxury box, cheering. Like, it's hard to do it because the defense, Tony, like, we know Dak Prescott was going to be good. That's not surprising. The defense struggling as mightily as it did on top of the incompetence of this coaching staff in Dallas, too, right? Those fake punts from their own territory. That was a bad look, too. Uh-huh. Sarah? I think the intestinal fortitude to never feel like you're too far behind is something to be commended and that they could come back and draw upon in later games during the season. This could really buoy them. But, yeah, there's a lot of issues with that team to allow them to be in that position. And I just want to say really quick, just to be fair, the Falcons might have known the rule but decided that that ball was going to be too hard to get control of I, I hear and you. might not go 10 yards and that they were safer doing that. I just don't want to slander a whole bunch no, no. of people not knowing the rules I, or the coach. I, I appreciate your pause there. And that kick did something we've never seen. Before. I mean, at five yards, you weren't sure it's going to get there. And it was like a putt bending, yeah. you know? Jump on One more ball. game to get your view on. KC 23, Chargers 20 in overtime. This, this game was a gas. From Justin Gilbert, uh, excuse me, Justin Herbert, surprise start. And even more surprising, prowess in a plum. And how L.A. got to Mahomes and was able to almost pull this off. And Bucker. He had to kick the game winner three times. From 53, 58, and 58 after our penalty and timeout. But Anthony Lynn saying he's sticking with Tyrod Taylor when he's healthy. That's what I want to start you with here, Sarah. Does Herbert deserve to be starting? Yeah, and this is what's so sad about it. The sort of empath in me who loves Tyrod Taylor is so sad that this might happen again. But maybe Anthony Lynn knows something about Herbert in practice and a, a, what a game plan would do for an opposite team. We don't really talk about that. They weren't expecting Herbert either, so they didn't plan for his strengths. So maybe he just wants to give him a little more time before he throws him out there again for good. Pablo? Yeah, this is unfortunately the story of quarterbacking. You get hurt, your backup comes in, is awesome, and suddenly everybody's like, let's go see what the new awesome kid's like. That's happened to so many players, and Tyrod Taylor, unfortunately, just the latest name, and when you have a first-rounder, Tony, a first-rounder like Justin Herbert, he was going to get time anyway. The fact that it happened against Pat Mahomes, it's a no-brainer to me. Yeah. Kevin Blackstone? Well, there's that little rule, and you can throw it out the window, about not losing your um, starting position to injury. And also, Herbert didn't win the game. I mean, he was fabulous. He didn't see that coming, 311 yards passing, had him, had him had the game won, if not for the heroics of Mahomes. Um, but he didn't win the game. And so I think it's a little bit different situation. And he'll get, he'll get another shot. Uh, but if, if Tyrod is healthy, I think he should remain the starter. So you never lose your job over injury. I, I submit Tom Brady and Drew Bledsoe as one. I mean, Drew Bledsoe was Drew Bledsoe Alex dragged Smith. into a hospital. Was, and and secondly, a... uh, it's not just the backup. I mean, this is the guy you drafted in the first round. I mean, mm -hmm. Chargers looked really good getting to Mahomes. They Defensively, they looked really strong in that game. And then Herbert was just a, a sweet surprise for them. We're taking a break right here. Coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Mason. Watching the Anthony Davis shot over and over and over again. He yells Kobe after it goes in. I, I like that. And Frank Vogel barely unpurses his lips. I love that. <laughs> the play <laughs> itself, not a lot was going on. Plumlee just points as he lets Davis run to the spot, and he stays near LeBron. I was reading Matt Moore today, the hardwood paroxysm. He heard from a scout say it's more nuanced than Plumlee just blowing it, but... I'll ask you, Pablo, did Davis win this game or the Nuggets defense blow it and lose AD there. Yeah, I mean, Plumlee made a mistake, but let's not act when you watch that video like there isn't a very large hand belonging to Nikola Jokic in the face of Anthony Davis towards the end. Anthony Davis is a seven-footer who rose up and drained a three with time expiring. The degree of difficulty of that shot in general is hard. I give credit to the shooter as opposed to the, def the defender that Kevin may not have been Blackstone, how about you? Well, all the credit has to go to Anthony Davis, I mean, to, to drop that shot in as, as um, was just described. But when I looked at it, I was thinking to myself in, in, in real time, I was like, wow, LeBron James just, he just blocked three guys out of the play. And then I'm looking at it again, I'm going, why is Mason Plumlee going under the pick and not over the pick? How many yeah. times do you hear coaches right. say that? So that was a big, big mistake. Sarah Spain. 
and it almost wasn't even a pick. It was like a ghost screen that Plumlee was looking for, but it wasn't actually there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He just anticipated what he thought he should do in a situation that wasn't actually happening. What I saw as I watched it was, hold up, how is Jokic on the inbounder and expected to guard Anthony Davis? What went wrong? So I slowed down, and you see it gets gunky in there, but yeah, Anthony Davis, congrats on a great shot, but that's not good enough defense. So you'd use the that's, word that's skunky. It got a little skunky in there is what you said. Okay. Um, I mean, it's, Skunky and gunky. It hurts. Oh, it hurts. And it's hard to defend two all-NBA players at the same time. I mean, I think we could all agree on that. And a two-pointer or a three-pointer would win the game, so that's the other part of it. Maybe that's why Plumlee was more worried about Davis going to the hoop. We'll move on. Buy or sell two. Buck 31, Panthers 17. Tampa's first win. And Brady emerged unscathed after the game from an Arians call-out. Actually, Arians called Brady outstanding. And I want to look at his stats here. 23 of 35, 217 yards, touchdown and interception, Pablo. Buy or sell, outstanding. I'm going to sell outstanding, but I'm going to buy the reason he said outstanding. Everybody is diving into what seems to be a perhaps not as optimal as they'd like relationship. Brett Favre, Tony, was drinking tea like Wendy Williams talking about how messy that relationship is. <laughs> Bruce Arians just needed to quiet those whispers outside, so that's why he said it. Mm -hmm. Buy or sell, Arians calling it outstanding, Blackstone. Uh, you you got to sell it. Um, those are the reasons why, as Pablo just said. But you know what he was in the second half? Six of 12 for 19 yards and a pick. That's not Tom Brady-ish. Um, <laughs> I so see that. Wow. That within a Good week stat. ago, but, but uh, not, not in the end. Sarah Spain? Yeah, neither the game performance from Brady was outstanding, nor is the fact that he is as sensitive as he is for arguably the greatest football, most accomplished football player of all time. We heard it with Belichick. We thought it might be a Belichick thing. If it's also an Arians thing, then that is on Tom Brady. He is plain spoken. He always has been. If it's going to be a problem, ugh. Well, Brady didn't say anything last week after that public call-out that wasn't really a call-out, but was a call-out, right? But you're reading into this. <laughs> he got Sarah. real snitty. Yeah, you. No, he got real snitty with someone, and he said, "What's your question?" Okay. And was really, okay. you could tell he was salty about what Arians had said. So you think he Arians talked, saying you know, the... outstanding this week was a way to kind of pump up his guy this yeah. week because he realized he he pushed him too far Branch. last week. Okay. Olive Branch. Yep. We'll move on. Buyer sell three. Piped in booze is what it was that we heard during the telecast of Rams Eagles. Rams 37, Eagles 19. We're right there. Don't panic. We'll be okay, Carson Wentz said after the game. He said some form of we nine times in an eight-sentence span post-game. But those piped and boos <laughs> were only on TV. You know, they, they weren't in the stadium, so he didn't hear that. How much of Philly's problems are we and how much are Wentz, Sarah? Yeah, he said we because that defense is ugly. Mm -hmm. He does not look good, but the defense is bad right now, and it is a we problem. Oh, you think it's a we problem, Pablo? Yeah, it's bigger than Wentz. I mean, it's problematic that Wentz, unfortunately, isn't good enough uh -oh. to carry an offense by himself. I, just, it's, <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. But the <laughs> biggest problem, Tony, is that Wentz doesn't have the help. He needs more help. He needs more help. He doesn't have it, unfortunately. Okay. And Kevin Blackstone, do you believe Wentz is free of some blame here? Like, uh, seems Sarah and Pablo are at least giving him a little bit? Absolutely not. Last week, he had an excuse because the rush yeah. was in his face the entire game. This week, they, they sewed that up. He didn't have any pressure on him, and he still threw two picks, including in the double coverage in the end zone. So yeah. Wentz has a lot yeah. to clean up on his own before that team goes anywhere. Yeah. We're now calling this the Uncle Phil, right? I mean, what do you mean we? We? What do you mean we? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin Blackstone, nearly enough there to pass Pablo Torre after you got that deduction for a banned word, Pablo. You know, we're back in studio next week. The, the, the deductions for banned words are coming back strong. But Blackstone leaves us right now. Torre, Spain, showdown, next. Sarah Spain, Pablo Torre, good luck in showdown. NFL injuries piling up through two weeks. Christian McCaffrey, MRI today on his ankle. He's out four to six. Saquon Barkley, ACL, out for the year. Drew Locke, AC joint, two to six weeks. Courtland Sutton, ACL, out for the year. Bruce Irvin for Seattle last night. Half the Niners team. Nick Bosa, Jimmy Garoppolo. Bosa's out for the year. Garoppolo, uh, who knows how long it's going to be. Super Bowl hangover or not, are you readjusting expectations for San Francisco now, Sarah Spain? 
Yeah, soft schedule coming up, so they might be able to grab a couple wins even with guys yeah. out. But long term, I still think it's not the contending I thought they would do. Yeah, the NFC West, Tony, is so good. The Cardinals, Rams, Seahawks, all look better yep. than the Niners before the injury. The only reason they got a win is because they played the Jets. That's the only reason they can feel good about any of this. Well, they started that game with an 80-yard touchdown run. It's hard to get a win in an 80-yard touchdown run as the first play <laughs> and still have terrible, terrible luck in the day. We'll split the point. We'll move on. Speaking of Arizona in the division and speaking of... Wait, I believe these are your two fantasy quarterbacks. Let's go. Buffalo and Arizona are 2-0. and <laughs> Josh Allen or Kyler Murray? Who's been more impressive, Pablo Torre? It is Kyler Murray, great Asian-American Kyler Murray. The guy has been incredible. Josh <laughs> Allen, you know who he played in week one, Tony, to pad his stats? The Jets. That's who he played. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Josh Allen, I'm higher on him than maybe anybody, but I expected him to be good, and he's played the Jets and the Dolphins. We saw Kyler Murray do big things against the team in the Niners week one when they were healthy. Uh, he's impressed me more. Kyler Murray is Pablo's fantasy quarterback, and you have that Josh Allen. And, and, and Sarah has Josh Allen, but she took Kyler Murray in this answer? Oh, this is – oh, man, your fantasy team is in disarray right life, now. real life, not fantasy, Tony. Pablo, FaceTime, 30 seconds. <laughs> So back in real life, the winner of the U.S. Open turned out to be one Bryson DeChambeau. And my dad wants me to praise all of his golf innovations, the angle of his swing, the physics, all of these metrics he's using. It's all impressive. But the biggest innovation, yeah, it's because he works out. Congratulations, golf. All of your wisdom accumulated. It results in maybe realizing we should probably exercise more. This guy seems to have done it, and it seems to have worked. Yeah, let's work out. Well, he we put on 50 pounds. I don't think it was just working out. I think it was 17 protein shakes a day. All right, 30 seconds. Pablo wins it. And now, Kobe.